Oh, man, I totally spilled my water. Um, fortunately, I've got some sponges here. So I'm, I'm going to write a hypothesis about, about this observation. Oh, wait, hypothesis writing? What? All right, let's go. But before we talk about hypothesis writing, uh, we're going to go over the scientific method. So you need to observe. Oh, look at that water right there that I just spilled. Question, hmm, how am I going to clean it up? Hypothesize which of these sponges, I wonder, is going to clean it up better. Design, I'm going to design an experiment to see which of these sponges are going to clean up that mess over there a little bit better. Then I'm going to use the experiment. I'm going to do the experiment to uh, test my hypothesis. I'm going to analyze what I got. What did I come up with? I'm going to conclude. In other words, is, my is the hypothesis that I came up with, is it supported? Is it right? Is my hypothesis right? My hypothesis wrong. Then I'm going to report. Hey, I figured out which sponges work really well to clean up water. Ninth, I'm going to iterate. So I'm going to look back at my, all, at my scientific process. Were there any potential errors? What were they? Could I avoid them, or were they just part of the deal? And what would I change for next time? All right, so what is a hypothesis? A hypothesis is an educated guess or a question that you can test. It has three characteristics. The first one is it explains a behavior or action, the mess on the table. It's got to be testable, which of these sponges is going to work. It's got to answer a question. In other words, how is it related? How is the IV related to my DV? When is the hypothesis used? Following an observation or wonder, or after determining a problem. All right, let's talk variables. So first is my independent variable, my IV. This is the thing that you change in the experiment when I mess with. So um, type of sponge. Dependent variable is the thing that changes as a result of a change in the independent variable, the thing that you measure, which in this case, which is going to soak it up the water the fastest. My constants, things that stay the same during this experiment. So variables in an experiment. Let's go ahead and, make, let's go ahead and check out these observations. Um, a hypothesis contains two variables. It's the independent and the dependent. An experiment should only test one variable at a time. So um, if, I, if I'm having multiple IVs, how do I know which one actually had the effect? Everything else should be a constant, something that does not change. All right, so let's check out these observations. Let's, let's identify the variables in here. So I observed the smelly poo has flies. What's going to be the independent variable? I would guess um, the smelliness of the poo, right? The dependent variable would be how many flies it has, what you can measure, right? So the independent variable is something I can change. Can I change the smelliness? Probably maybe depending on what I had to eat. I don't know. Um, as I change that, am I going to get more flies? I don't know. We got ourselves a cool experiment. So I observed that daffodils sprout before tulips. What's my independent variable here? What's my dependent variable? And my last observation is, I wonder if eighth graders, if they eat more candy, if they will have more pimples. What's my independent and dependent variable there? All right, so let's go ahead and name as many constants as you can for this observation. So I notice that the more work eighth graders have, the more they jump for joy. So what would my constants be here? I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe the type of work. So like if I give them like a whole bunch of science work versus I go tell them to dig holes, right? That is going to be different. So in my experiment, the type of work has to be a constant. If I'm going to, if I'm going to measure the type of work, it's got to be the same type of work. I can't have like a, a bunch painting a room and a bunch digging holes and then a bunch doing science homework. So name as many constants as you can for this observation. All right, so hypothesis format. There are two formats that we use in science. Um, they're going to they're change depending on your particular application. Use the one that's best for your individual application. So the first one is if IV is related to DV, then a change in your IV will cause a change in the DV because. Now remember, you need to tell me what the change is. Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Um, the because is the most important part 
of this hypothesis format. That's when the science comes in. Otherwise, it's just an if-then statement. The second format is a change, again, increase or decrease in your independent variable, your IV, will cause a change, increase or decrease, um, in your DV because. Hypothesis writing. Um, one thing that I noticed about this is this is for sure, you know, I got the blue one right here, which is, you know, like kind of this big. Then I got the orange one, which is like this big. Um, so in this experiment, that would be a potential error, you know, definitely not a constant. Totally two different, two different, totally two different tiles. But I wonder if I could still use it, maybe like size, something like that. Now the possibilities, the possibilities are endless. See you in class, hope that helped.